Hi everyone, this is video number five for chapter two. So we continue our previous example. We first check that example and uh, check it with uh, the previous observations we have made. We say that the feasible region, the border, the boundary of it are all straight lines. So that holds the optimal solution is found at the feasible region, which also holds. So um, if this observation shall be general, that is, the optimal value is always obtained at the boundary uh, at a corner point, then this observation would suggest a simplified um, algorithm that is we only need to check the values at the corner if we want to find the optimal point okay now assume you have identified the feasible region and you have found all the corner points for the feasible region for the problem, so which we list here, those are the four corner points. Then you plug them in into the um, cost function, and then you see that the cost function takes four different values at those four points. Among these four, you found this is the minimum, which we highlighted in green at six. 21, which is the point. And based on this observation, you can conclude that the minimum of the problem, the optimal point, will also be at that point, and the minimum value for the cost will be 144. So the advantages of using this algorithm is the following. So you still have to sketch the feasible region, find the corner points. That step has to be performed. What you can skip is the step that um, find the slope of the contour line for the cost function and then move it along in the feasible region to identify the optimal point. That you don't need to do, so all you need to do after you identify the feasible region is to identify the corners and then find the value of the cost function and locate the minimum. Okay, And this algorithm actually gives you some flexibility. Let's look at it. Using this algorithm, then we can easily change the cost function without having to change much. Assume now there is a price change for the two feet. That is, for feet X, the price is now 14, and then for feet Y, the price is now 4 cents per pound. Okay. With that change, then we have a new cost function, which we call G. That would be 14 times X plus 4Y. Now, with this change, how would the change be for our optimal um, solution. Okay, so we use our new algorithm. We make a table. In the table, we list the corner points, all four of them, and then we compute the cost function at these four corner points, which we list here. 16a, 16a, 26433,6. Now here something interesting happens. We see that the minimum value 168 is obtained at two corner points, the first one and the sex, second one, and it's 168. So we can conclude now that is the minimum value, the minimum cost will be 168 cents, but then the minimum point there are two points at the two corner. So what's happening here? 
well, um, in order to see what is happening here, um, we should probably go back and look at the feasible region and see what are these two points and what is their relationship to the cost function. Okay, so here we are, we're back to the graph of the feasible region. Okay, so for, from our computation, we have noticed that this point here and this point here, they both give the minimum value. So what happens? So if we connect these two points, that will be actually the border of one of the constraints, the we see that this one has exactly the same slope as the cost function, right? So this one has the slope is negative 3.5. And if we look at the new cost function, 14x plus y, if we want the cost function to be some constant, we write constant, you can think it's k, and what will be the slope? Well, it will be the 14 over 4 negative, which is exactly negative 3.5. So along this edge, this border, the cost function is actually constant. Okay? And it's exactly 168. So if you adopt the previous um, technique by looking at the contour lines and moving it down, reduce the cost, you will reach a point that this line touches the border, actually an edge of the border. So actually every point on this boundary is an optimal point, which gives you the minimum value of 168 cents. Okay, so maybe it's time to make some further observations. So from the previous discussion, we see that the minimum point, the minimum value actually, can be achieved at many points. So however, even though the minimum points can be many, the minimum value of the cost function is unique. This is not so um, difficult to understand because if you shall have two different values, and then one of them is not the minimum. So the minimum value has to be unique. If you shall find two points, let's call them P1 and P2, they are both minimum points, then they must be two neighboring vertices. We call them adjacent points of your feasible region. Okay, so these are the observations we have made by using the graphing method. And we also recognize the restriction of this graphing method. That is, it can only work for problems with two variables. Because if we have more, like five, six variables, we will not be able to graph them. But um, a good thing to comment is the following. So for the example we have seen, we have taken a problem of minimization, the cost value. And we can also imagine that the method would also work if you want to maximize some value, let's say some profit. Okay. And in fact, later on, we will look at both minimization and uh, op uh, maximization problems. Okay, so here is a textbook reading assignment. After this example, you should read example 2.2.2 and uh, example 2.2.3 in your textbook. Okay, so have fun!